Hey guys, welcome back to Predatory Fins. As you can see, I'm not at the shop today. It's actually a beautiful, very sunny day here in New Jersey. We came to Fitz Aquatic to see these guys because apparently they are the largest koi importers in USA. And Fejai and I have a bat with them to see who has the most expensive fish, who has the biggest fish. We came here to also see if we can recruit one of them for our boxing match in August and get Ryan a white fish that looks like him. So before we go inside and knock on the door, I just want to show the pond here, it looks pretty cool. Maybe we can get that white fish there. It looks like Ryan a little bit, yeah. I haven't been inside yet, so I want to see what they have, what type of quality fish they got, because we don't deal with koi's, but maybe we can start getting into it. You know, I think koi's are beautiful fish. They're very colorful. I think girls like koi's a lot, right? <laughs> yeah. More than the monster fish that we sell. So maybe uh, we can swave our wives into uh, jumping into koi's with these guys. All right. Restricted Ooh, area. Employees, employees only. only. Well, we don't work here yet, so. But that was quite a fun two hour drive, not that bad. Yo, hey. what are you doing the, here? The new boxer. <laughs> huh? How's it going? Let's do it. What do you think? Oh. We're recruiting you in front of the camera. That's the first thing we're going to do right now, is recruit you in front of everybody. Oh, shit. That's, yeah. that, that's the priority today, not the koi. You got to gotta start with the bang, otherwise, you, you, know, you might think about it. Like, no, 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 no. I'm yes, in. No. Let's do it. We got to find an all pond guy for you to fight. I want to fight. Hey, if you're a pond guy out there and you want to get knocked out, oh. let's go. Uh, oh. There we go. Oh. He laid Guys, down the on the comments below, let us know what other pond guy he should fight. So your name is Fitz. Fitz, yeah. And you started this whole thing. Yeah. And this is? I'm AJ. AJ. Yep. That's your partner. He's in charge of koi sales and marketing. So, right so, so he does control. what I so do. He's going to make the decisions. If you want a deal, this is the guy to go to. Yes, okay, sir. so he does what I do and you do what he does. So you're kind of like Kevin Rod on the koi world. That's us. Pretty much. Yeah. Okay. All right, so Mr. So, Fajai, how are you doing? Good to All meet right. You. <laughs> now, I got a question. I'm here to see the biggest fish because I want to see who has the biggest fish between us. The most expensive because I think we might win. Right? We made a bet when you show up to the shop. And uh, I want to pick up a white koi for my son because he's pretty black. Uh, All right. All right. I don't know. You I mean you're talking a little bit, but I don't think you're gonna have us beat. We got some crazy fish here. I want to see it. I want to see. It. I want to see if you can really prove it. What you're saying. All right. Right now we're trying to see the biggest koi they have, and it's in this pond right here. You brought that koi from where? Japan. This is straight from Japan. It got him just a few weeks ago, and it's a hundred centimeters. A hundred centimeters. So, so that meter. freight wasn't cheap at all. I think it costs more to ship that fish than it costs to ship AJ. Yeah, AJ looks light. AJ looks light. I, but, dude, look at the size of that whale. All right, let's take a look. All right, this is a Karasha boy. It's a solid color fish. It's only eight years old. Eight years old. It's a hundred centimeters. It's a massive toy. Huge body. Wow. The box to ship it was a... 175 pounds to get this fish back to Japan. So. Well, some of the stingrays we shipped, the box was like 200 something pounds, remember? Yeah, yeah. The so box I thought like this feet. would be even heavier because it's such a tall fish. Exactly. But this got to be at least what, 12 inches high? More. About 14, yeah, 14 inches high. It's, it's, the body's so thick on it. I'll, I'll pick it up and give you like a, a look at how thick the body is on the fish. Look at that. Look at that. How thick. The fishes. And all the scales are perfect. And you get a fish like this, this size without any blemishes, it's really difficult. And that's what drives the price of the koi. Like hey, Jay, I'll buy it for you right now. I want to buy it. All right, sold. All right. No, you said it was already sold. That's why I want to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> you messed me up. It's already sold. It's already sold. That's a beautiful fish, though. This is not the most expensive. This is the biggest right now, right? Wait, but I think they cheated. They didn't grow it. We grow our fish. He didn't uh, grow it. He imported no. this size. I fed it one time. Oh, uh, it's growing. Yeah. It's growing. This fish is already like sold, so we can't take it home, and we don't have a space for it either. But I think it's sold for what twenty-five thousand. You said about yeah. About so definitely worth it. Look at the size of this guy. It was so much just in freight to bring it from Japan. I can't. I can't even imagine. I think the freight was like two or three grand just to get this fish home. See that? It's almost like shipping a shark. All right, so you're gonna release him. And I'm assuming you do the same thing whatever you do, you ship air cargo to your customer. Air cargo or UPS next day, but a fish like that will hand deliver it. It's just too valuable. Ah, uh, okay. So you put it in a van and... We'll drive it. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. So now you said you had this shipment come in, and these are all being separated, treated. Separated, treated. To make sure they're nice and healthy before they get delivered. Okay, so they're pretty much the same thing we do. That's, that's nice, that's nice. I respect that. It's a lot of work to go into quality animals, but some people don't understand that. You know, just because he buys it from a good source, he still has to take care of it here. I'm sure Fleet Jai has a bunch of questions that you want to ask. Oh, yeah. See, he, I know, I can see your lips, like, moving a little bit. You're ready to talk. <laughs> Did you see any that caught your eye? Uh, yeah. I, I liked a lot of the, the yellow-white ones, the yellow-black ones. How many times have you guys fell in the pond on purpose and not on purpose? I've never fell in on purpose. Never? I, well, I've been in this pond, but I've never, yeah, never it's fell pretty, in. It's pretty AJ, cool. Well, I'll add the clip. AJ fell in. All right, send me that clip. I'll put it out. I want to see it. in the bowl, the, the black's gonna drop. When the fish goes into a bowl, the sumi, the black on it, will go away. It's really weird what happens to the sumi. Oh, I see it already. You see it? Can you see it? Like the scales are starting to like... It's starting to fade out. Yeah. 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 Alright, it's ejected. I don't want any more. <laughs> so this one is available? Yeah. What would this guy go for? Around eight grand, a fish like this. And they will live for about how how long? If if your water's good, and everything's good. 30, 40 years. Oh, so definitely That's worth the investment. That's worth the investment, yeah. 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 So definitely like a pet. But just like your fish, he's, all these fish need a good environment. And that's what keeps them alive and keeps them strong. Okay, so if you have a pond, you can't just not take care of your filter. You got to, you know, make sure that these guys, because koi are pretty dirty, right? You, look at the filtration they have. If you don't keep up with your, with your filter, you, can, you guys are home with the same thing, you know? Your pond, just because it's outside, he still needs to be taken care of. Otherwise, you won't be able to keep these guys for a long time. You gotta keep them healthy. Yeah. All right, very nice. So, as far as size, I think we got him beat, because we import larger fish before. But I'm a little worried about the price. Yeah. If that one was 25, I'm worried about the most expensive one. Uh, I think the most expensive one we imported. I don't think we got him beat, Kevin. We might have to think about something else. Yeah, you we'll know come what up I mean? with something. Because now the problem is we're challenging them. Okay. And we, if we lose two, then then they're gonna win the bet. Okay. So what are we gonna do? We gotta think of something else. I'll think of something else. All right, you guys ready for the big fish? So, so this one, I think, you know, you agree that we win this challenge, right? Because I mean, you have the, the shark. You can't beat the shark. The shark, the arpimus, you know. Yeah. So, all right, size, we got it. Size matters. You know that, right? All right, so I got it on the size. All right, let's see the most expensive fish. You should put him to fight, bro. Look at the size of this guy. So you want two guys from Fitz Fish Ponds going out I mean, there? he could pretty take, he could pretty take even rod down, bro. Look at this. It's like, Shit. what, 230 pounds? Something around there. Alright, and then Around you can there. be the, the cut man on the corner. Yeah. yeah. Take out the rhino, bring him in for the fight. Oh, see that? That's the rhino, and you were going to be who? The I don't koi know. guy. I'm just the koi the guy. The koi guy, okay. You can be right. Miyagi. So <laughs> this is where they keep the most expensive fish. Is this the most expensive you ever got? One of the most expensive ones ever. Ooh, so I feel, I feel honored. Alright, let's go see. Wow, dude, look at the size of these koi, bro. Definitely got some cows here. But to figure out, you know, you have to have the, the eye like these guys do to, to see the value. I don't, can you see the difference in value? Not initially. All right, so can you explain to us like how, what makes this fish so expensive and how? So these koi are more like a designer boutique koi. They do really high quality and not that many, this breeder. Okay. So each fish is really, really cared for. And he has some of the best parent koi in Japan that produce these high quality champion fish. So what makes them a high quality? 
So a lot of it is the body shape and the body conformation. These fish are only three, four, five, six years old, and you can see how their body looks almost like that big koi we saw over there. Right. It's the feeding, the water they're kept in, and then also the color definition. Some of these fish it looks like they're almost drawn, like a little, like a, like a drawing on their body. All right. So based on that description, I want to see if you can find that koi. I don't know if that's the one, but I would think that that's the one right there. Is it it? That's the one. That's the one? Good eye. Dude, Are you I, cheating? No, 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 but look. That's, how how that, can you? You don't know the koi, and that was the first one you picked at. That's what I would buy if I had the money. All right, okay. I don't have the money. I don't even know how much it is yet. So for that koi right there, what is the value of that fish? Something like that's around a quarter of a mil. They beat us. Wait, 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 wait. You can't just take his word for it that's a quarter of a mil. Where's the invoice? Where's the, yeah, Where's the invoice? I can say our fish are like a million dollars. Is it sold? It's sold, yeah. It's sold. Damn. So he can prove it. All right. Damn. So for a fish like this, if you have customers watch right now, right, and they're like, hey, you know what? I can afford that. I want to buy it. What do you, how do you sell it? You pre-sell them. You don't bring them in and sell it here. A, a fish like that is pre-sold while we're in Japan. Uh, We'll bring in fish up to fifty to seventy thousand dollars to retail at the farm, but it's rare that we bring in a fish of that caliber here before it's sold because the fish has more value in Japan because we can sell it anywhere in the world. When the fish is just here, we only can sell it to the U.S. market. Yeah, I wonder who this buyer is. Yeah, I, I, we're gonna have to I, find I, out I, off I, camera. We have to find out. <laughs> but look, guys, you got an opportunity to see. Uh, you just arrived what two weeks ago? Two days ago? A few weeks ago, yeah. This one right yeah. here. Look at the size of that. But like you're saying, the red, the markings, the body shape, it makes it so unique, and the price of a house. That's crazy. So what makes a buyer want to spend that kind of money on a koi? So you know you mentioned the boxing fight, right? A tournament? Well, mm -hmm. that's exactly what this koi is for. It's for a tournament. This guy wants to win a big koi show with it and then continue to show this fish all over the U.S. So can they make money with these koi tournaments or just for, for pleasure? It's more for, uh, you know, status. status and the you know, achievement of growing and keeping a koi of this quality. All right. So when we enter, koi, when we start to enter koi, that means we made it in the world. We, we should start doing a stingray <laughs> competition, bro, because, like, this is crazy. 200,000. Wow. Definitely worth it, though. Some amazing. Look at that one. It's got blue eyes, black and white. Really nice. So this whole shipment came in, and they're all doing pretty good. Did you lose any on the shipment? Uh, on transportation? Once, one, one on this, a few weeks after we lost one. So, so this many, was... For how, okay. for how many fish? Thousands. So a thousand fish only lost one. It's, it was definitely a good shipment. So this whole pond right here is one shipment that came in together? This is just from one breeder in Japan. Okay. Uh, that one shipment had 140 boxes. This was probably only about 40 boxes in this pond. So you I know see. what I see right now? Every pond is a different breeder. Mm -hmm. So when this man walks into Japan, bro, everybody's probably like, <laughs> hey, come to my pond, come to my pond. Here's my, here's my daughter. Because <laughs> you're buying fish from every breeder. We have our favorites, but you know, this past trip we bought from like 26, 27 breeders. Yeah, you got us beat. You got us beat. I assume that you got us beat. You don't even try the life, AJ. They got us beat. All right, all right. But I also came here to uh, find a white koi that looks like my son. How big is that? What are you looking for? 20,000, 30,000, 200,000. It's for my son, not for a customer. It's healthy. I spent 30000 just to make him. So, I need something. We yeah. take college funds. You can mull them over. Ah. Yeah. Okay. We, right. have, we, we have some platinum toy that are this big to about like this. Maybe one with long fins. Let me see what you have. All right, let's go. So, I'm pretty impressed with what we've seen here at Fit so far. And I'm thinking about carrying some of their fish in our store and online for you guys to be able to have access to this great quality koi. So far, everything looks great. The koi looks healthy. And we were talking about their quarantine process and what makes their fish so special. And uh, you tell them a little bit what we're gonna do here. So we get all these fish from different breeders that come from Japan. We isolate them in different tanks by breeder. And then we do a lot of preventative care 
microscope scrapes, treatments, heat ramping to make sure the fish are going to be perfectly healthy for your customers and all of our customers. All right, so one of the things they mentioned that was really interesting is they do scrapes on their fish, right? And scraping is a process of getting some of the mucus off the fish, right? And putting it under a microscope to see if they have parasites. Is that what we're going to do now? Exactly. Well, first we're going to pick out some koi that you guys want for uh, your son. Okay. And then from there, we're gonna do a microscope scrape on to make sure they're nice and clean. So, okay, Dude, that he, sounds good. He sounds a lot like you. Like, like you guys almost went to the same school together. Well, great minds think alike, right? There we go. Yeah. Well, I guess I'm not part of that crew then, because uh, we got some white fish right here that does look like Ryan, but I have to pick one to bring it to him. Uh, I don't know, but the white on this guy is popping. What do you think? You're the koi guy, dude. Which one do you think I should take? Uh, I mean, I like the Ginrin butterfly. That one has really nice fins. Look at the barbells like on, on the whisker. So from this little batch here, you go for this guy? And the Ginrin is really cool on it. All right, so let's take him and put him under the mic microscope to see if he's got any problems, if he needs to be treated. And uh, that's going to be right a new fish. Looks pretty good, dude. It's just almost as white as my son. <laughs> All right, so we're going to scrape the fish, guys, and this is how they do it. So with a small fish, you could just flip it upside down, get a nice scrape near the gills, any area near the fins. That allows you to just, parasites usually go for openings on the fish, so that allows you to just scrape the best area where you have the most chances of finding something. You're taking out the bubbles for what purpose? I'm just taking, the, I'm just trying to get a couple of them out just because it interrupts like how you're seeing in the microscope. Okay. So really what I'm doing is I'm gonna get this into the middle of the slide. Um, sometimes you wanna add like a little drip of water it allows you just to move it around a little bit and okay. see a little bit better. So then you'll put this slide cover up, just tap it very slightly, and then we'll take this over to the microscope to check it out. Do they spend a lot of time here, like sitting on the microscope? So yeah, you can kind of see our, our remnants a little bit. We just gotta throw these out, but you know, we're scraping um, all the time, every day, especially when shipments are coming because it's super important identify the parasites and treat them you know within the next week okay everybody looking good but can yeah, i see use, it so pretty much generally we're using this site and this site because it's two different um visuals of the microscope um the red is a little bit farther away allows you to see parasites like flukes things of that a little bit bigger but when you want to use the yellow you want to see like smaller stuff like uh costia and this allows you to see it a lot better We'll get this going. Logan's not doing the first slide right now. He's, he kind of scans like a grid, up and down, goes around. Make sure it's all good. Yeah, you usually you're looking for movement when you're looking at the slide. So if you move slowly in a grid pattern, you know, moving down, left, you know, right, down, left, and just moving like that kind of pattern, you can see the movement as long as you're moving slow enough. And so I'm gonna hook my phone up. Every so often, okay. adjusting the view so that it's not blurry. I know it sounds weird, but this is the same technique that they do if you're trying to find out if your sperm's good. <laughs> I'm being real. I'm being 100% real. Because we, we, Ryan took a long time for, for, for him to come out. Yeah. So I had to go check, and yeah. they did the same scraping. And they couldn't find any of those swimmers, no right? Parasites, <laughs> no parasites. No parasites. But I remember 85% of it was good, and the rest was like slow, like wiggly, the uh -huh. wrong way. So he came out pretty good, but it's the same process then. Yeah, All pretty right. much. Almost. So if you ever see something else in there, you already know. Okay. Okay. So we just want to get, oh, there it is. Beautiful. So what I'd like to do is just close enough. It does waste your battery a little bit, but it really allows you to, you know, if I need to take a picture, boom, I take a picture. Oh, that's awesome. And then I can identify anything that might be here and it's also really clear so so the fact that we don't see anything moving is a good sign yes right? so really you're looking for anything that might be moving might be moving around um trying to eat away at the slime coat and um overall it just hurts the fish over a long period of time um but you want to build the immune system of the fish so it's super important that when these fish come in that you want to look for anything that might, you know, not allow them to reach their full potential. But yeah, pretty much just scanning the whole slide, 
looking for anything. So it looks pretty good. Now, is there a way that we can, you have a pond that you know it hasn't been treated yet that we can find see movement? Um, so you're not happy that the fish is clean? No, no, you want to see? Out, now okay. we're going to take even more fish because now Fitz proved that he's Fitz. But so, so I, I want to see some movement. Okay. We have, we have videos and stuff. Oh, wow. So they move that fast, huh? See how it's moving around? Uh huh. What was that? Can you put the phone lower? Yeah. So, that, uh, okay. yeah there so usually those little things there, where are they? So this is on the slime coat of the fish. That but white dot is... Yeah, so not... You see these little things moving around? Yeah. yeah. So that's all a parasite. And, you know, there's ways to identify that by just looking at the fish. But we always like to do a scrape just so we 100% know what we need to treat. At the farm. That is dope. Dude, yeah. I'm, I'm buying one okay, of these Here's things. a video of a fluke. Yeah, this is a fluke as well. I made this one. Okay, so that's a fluke. That's skin fluke, right? Yep. No, that's a gill fluke that's there. A gill you can fluke. tell this by the uh, the eyes that's on it. So for you to scrape gill flukes, you have to take the scraping from the gill? Um, In the general area. So okay. Like, so it's not like inside on the gill itself? No, what me and Logan do is we kind of like... Whenever we're scraping like a larger fish or anything above 14 inches, I'll hold the fish and Logan will take the scrape. It's easier okay. for us to um, do it. We do it quicker and it's easier for two people. Okay. Because if you're trying to hold a fish with one arm and do a scrape, it's not that easy. So, okay. But anywhere like right around where the gill plate is. Okay. Is really where they're going to be. <laughs> Sounds good. Sometimes really good. see them as well when you're looking under the fins, the front fins as well. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they'll be hanging out there if they're freshly hatched. Okay. So you'll sometimes see the smaller ones. So that's why it's important to have a microscope that has more zoom because you can see the adults with the larger zoom, mm -hmm. but when they're babies and freshly on the skin still finding the way to the gills, you've got to really zoom in really far, sometimes even as far as the oil lens. Okay. So. so this is an even, this is another parasite. We call it trick. Okay, trichodina? Yep, yep. trichodina. But, um, you know, a lot of the treatments that we use work on this, but also costly as well. So, um, but it's really just about, you know, we're not just doing scrapes when the fish first come in. Yes. We're doing scrapes to maintain the healthiness of our population here at the farm. So every week or every other week, we're doing scrapes on these tanks, making sure they're good and they don't have anything going on. All right. So you heard it here, guys. You saw the scraping process. They do it on a routine basis to make sure that everything is on par and everything in their facility is on point. So I think we're going to go ahead and take these fish and we're going to work up a partnership deal with Fritz here. And we're going to start offering some of his koi. This is selling $400,000 course. Of course, we're going to have to build a partnership with him. All right. Yeah, this is just baby stuff for us right now. Yeah, no, we're, we're nothing compared to that koi over there. But thank you for your time, brother. Appreciate it. Dude, I gotta start creating. We got this fight. I got. I look for more. Create team, pro team. What do you need? I need it all. <laughs> I need it all. I got you. Let us know in the comments below who you want him to fight, and should we buy a microscope so Fei Jai can? Dude, Fei Jai is already slow. So if I get one of these microscopes, we're not gonna get nothing done at the warehouse. I already see that. But I do think we should because I think those videos are gonna be awesome. Thank you for watching. What should we name Ryan's Koi? No, Ryan's Koi is not there. I'm oh, just okay. saying. Uh -huh. What should we name Ryan's Koi? And we'll see you in the next one.